bin, a house goes up in flames. Let's clear the house, man. Let's go. As firemen race to the scene, two young girls battle to escape from the blazing inferno. There were flames everywhere. On the next Rescue 911. On November 29, 1989, David and Cynthia Cargill left their two young daughters in the care of a babysitter overnight for the first time in their lives. But they had no reason to be worried on that quiet night in Dallas. Hey, girls, you be good. Be in bed by eight. Love you, first. Love you, too. That evening, we had asked the sitter to stay that night because my husband always plays basketball on Wednesday nights, and that particular night, he had to go to work early. And we knew he wasn't going to be home that evening, and I also was out of town on business that evening. So we had to have a sitter there. And this was the first time I had ever left town as far as leaving my children in the care of someone else. And that was difficult for me as far as doing that. So I was kind of apprehensive about that. Around 8 p.m., the babysitter had the two girls get ready for bed. Kate and Aaron were sleeping in the same room together, which normally is Aaron's room. But since the sitter was staying there that night, the sitter was going to sleep in Kate's room. Is it warm enough? Okay. The babysitter put the children to bed and tucked them in and apparently shut the door to their room so she wouldn't disturb them because she wanted to stay up and watch television. Though the Cargills had checked their smoke alarm just two weeks before, on that night it didn't work. The exploding windows triggered the burglar alarm. Eight-year-old Kate was awakened by the sound of the alarm. I saw smoke coming into the room. Then I touched the door handle. The door handle was hot, and it told me not to open the door. Aaron, wake up! I crawled to the um, window, and I tried to break it with my hand, and it didn't work, and it was scared. Passerby noticed the blaze and ran to a nearby house where he woke Dwight Book out. We heard a pounding on the door, and by this time the smell was uh, overwhelming. The fire was rapidly getting out of control. I called Gay and asked her to call 911 and get assistance as quickly as possible. I knew the children were in the house, and uh, my immediate concern was, my God, where are the children? Hello? Hello? Gay Patrick's call for help came in at 12.54 a.m. I thought, how could this be happening? It didn't seem like it was real. I thought I was having a bad dream. It was one of those things where you hope for a miracle. Fire department is en route. Put them on. Emergency units from the Dallas Fire Department were immediately dispatched. Let's clear the house, man. Let's go. Let's clear the house. 
Fire investigator Tom Oney was also sent to the scene. Anytime you have a fire in a house, children will tend to hide from fire. And you find them in fire deaths after a fire, many times in places of hiding. My mom and my dad, including my school, taught me to, if there was a fire, break the window with something. Even after Kate broke through the glass, a scream kept her and her six-year-old sister trapped inside. The babysitter heard Kate's cries for help. When she got the screen off, then I got out. Then we went to the middle of the yard. I turned around, my sister was not behind me. So I went back in the house. The fire department was on the scene within seven minutes, headed by Captain Bill Crawford. When we arrived at the house, it was fully involved. The glass had ruptured in the front part of the house. There were flames everywhere. It's, it's a miracle that the girls got out of the home when they did. Had this young girl not had the presence of mind to follow the instructions that she had received, I don't think they would have made it. Katie was able to do many of the right things, and it worked just right. She did, however, go back in to get her sister, which in this case worked out great. But this is not the normal situation. Once you get out of a burning building, stay out. Do not go back in. People that go back into burning buildings usually do not get back out alive. It was such a close call. I mean, we're talking about if it was delayed anymore, or had Catherine opened the door, it would have killed them immediately. What kills me is how the heat was so intense it melted the oven glass. It's just amazing that something can burn this fast. The fire training that the children had had was uh, quite in depth uh, by us instilling in Kate and Aaron what needs to happen to get themselves out of the fire. It saved their lives. Uh, I just can't say enough about fire education as far as in the schools and what the fire department does. Here's some of your schoolwork, Katie. Where? 100, how about that? You see that? The thought of uh, losing the children, uh, it's still quite frightening to us. Uh, it's something that I think I'll think about for quite a long time. Investigators determined that the fire that destroyed the Cargill's home was caused by faulty wiring in their den. Three months later, they're beginning to put the pieces of their life back together and trying to erase the memory of that near tragic night. We lost everything. And, you know, it sounds kind of corny, but you realize that life's too short. It makes you, oh, I don't know, just really take time to, to enjoy life because it could be over in a matter of seconds. Although Kate received awards for her heroism, she values most the praise from her peers. Dear Kate, I think you are a hero. I, I am so glad you saved your sister's life. Every once in a while, I'll take a deep breath and just realize how close we came to losing our children. And that makes all the difference in the world because nothing else really matters. You are very brave, and I really admire you. Next, step inside the command center where the calls for help are answered and meet the real-life heroes who save lives. Stay tuned for another episode of Rescue 911, next on Discovery Health Channel. Real life, medicine, miracles.